Hey everybody, it's Donnell McAdams here for our five, Live at Five that we do. I know some of you it's all different times, but for us it's five o'clock. And so we're ready to get started on today's project called Caught in a Web. And so we're going to be um, creating a spider web since it's just about that time of year. And how this all came about and why we're running a few minutes late is because Megan and I went to the dollar store today and we found these cute little spiders. And so I said, six spiders for a buck. I don't like spiders, you guys. But six spiders for a buck. I said, we're going to do this so that we use this as part of our project today. So you can tell how far in advance sometimes we plan because that's what makes this fun. But you never know when inspiration is going to strike. That's exactly right. And when you're at the Dollar Tree and you see a spider and you think template quilting, you just got to act on that. So here we go. We're going to have a handout for you, but it will be after the fact because we just got finished with doing our spider web. And so you'll want to um, find that handout. Now I'm going to tell you some things that probably aren't going to be on the handout. So you might want to grab a pen and uh, some paper. There's nothing really exact about doing this project. But if you want to do it like we're doing it, then what you're going to do is you're going to cut yourself two layers of a fabric. Now this is just an orange fabric. It has a little pattern in the background. Um, you can do whatever you want. And I use two 20 inch squares. So I cut two 20 inch squares. And in the back of this one, for my fusible, or excuse me, for my batting, I'm using a fusible. I'm using Pellon 987F, which is fusible on one side only. So Megan, if you wanna hand my stuff over there, we'll start from the beginning here. And so what we're gonna do is I have already got my layers ready to go. That's, my glitter's coming off. So I have fused my fusible right to the back of that. I'm gonna turn the directions on this so that my fabric's both going the same way. I know it really doesn't matter, but it's kind of bugging me. So 20 inch squares of fusible or batting. You can use just batting, but I think you remember last week I talked about, I wanted to try and figure out a way we can make this a wall hanging and how we can hang it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna be prepared to do that. And when this is finished, it will actually be about 18 inches square. So what we're going to do is we are going to start by measuring off just an inch all the way around. And the purpose of this is we're not necessarily going to use that as anything more than to indicate our margin. So I need to reach underneath here and get my ruler because I've already, well actually Megan did it for me, I have already put two layers of best press on this and I hope you can see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is lining this up and I wanna create my margin. And the reason I'm creating this margin is as we go, I'm gonna know that I can go out in that area and it's not gonna be on my project. So it makes my spider web go a lot faster simply because I can just travel, that's usually what we call it, in that margin and I don't have to worry about tying off and all of that. And I am going to do a different thing today than I normally do because this is a spider web and it's going to be a wall hanging that's out for maybe six weeks at the very most. I'm not going to take everything and tie it off. I'm going to do a little bit of a tie off. Some of you have seen other educators do this all the time and that's where you just kind of backtrack a little bit. So at the beginning I'll be pulling my threads up but then I'll just be backtracking. So I've marked all the way around there an inch away or yeah an inch away from my edge so I know that I can work in that area and it's probably not, well, it's not gonna be on there because now I've got my 18 inch square. Now, I will tell you that when I got finished with this, I cut it a little bit differently. I didn't follow this line because as you well know, sometimes that pulls in and so it had and so I didn't want to follow the line and then have a crooked side. So that is what I did with that. Now to get started, 
we are going to measure in seven inches from one of the corners. And I'm just making this seven inches in. Maybe I need to turn it that way so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put this on the seven right here so that when I draw this and come around the end, I now have that seven inch. So up from the corners, on one corner, just one corner, I've made it seven inches. Now this right here is gonna be my starting spot. So I am going to take, in this case I'm using the eight point crosshair grid, or crosshair square, and I'm going to make those lines. And I am using my Frixon pen, but I have sprayed two layers of Best Press. So I sprayed a Best Press on or Starch Savvy, and then I spray or I pressed it, and then I sprayed a second layer. And we're only using the Frixon markers, not yeah, the pens. Not the pens because the markers come off so much easier. Now I'm correct, Megan, we only had these eight lines to start. Nope, we need 16. You need 16 because you did dotted okay. lines. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead right now and I'm gonna make this line clear to the top because I'm gonna need it later. Kathy asked a great question. You start off with a seven inch square at the bottom of one corner. She says it's always seven inches. Doesn't matter, it's a spider web. Well, and I think it depends, uh, Kathy, on where you wanna start your center. We yeah. didn't want our smack in the center, so we offset it. Yeah, so we, w we didn't want our spider like right in the dead center of it. We wanted our web to grow, but only in like a part of the direction. We didn't want it to be dead center. So that's why we did it that way. Now all I'm doing is lengthening those lines. So now you can see this is gonna be our center where we start. That's actually gonna be where my thumbtack goes to come up from the middle. And I have marked those with a purple marker. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell it differently. You can do it two different ways. You can use different colors of markers, or you can actually put hash lines. In other words, dash lines. So what I'm doing now is to be able to do the design that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna tell you about those templates in a second, I am going to line up and move my crosshair grid so that I can get 16 lines that are equally spaced. And I'm using a different color of marker. That one looks like it's about out. So let me get a different one here. Oh yeah, that's better. That must have been from your first batch of markers. Well, I've got so many of them. All right, so now I've got green lines, and I hope you can see the difference in color there. And you're gonna see what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put an X on my green lines because it's not only the fact that it's a different color, I'm gonna be using it differently and I wanna have it indicated so that I don't mess up. I just don't like having to do something and then take it out. So that's what I'm doing. Whoa. So Linda wants to know, are these markers thin or thick? So Linda, I can answer that one while she's working. These are thick for you to be able to see them, but when Donnell does it in her own studio when she's, um, you just do the regular thin. I use the fine lines, The fine yes. liner. Okay, so what I did over here, and I'm gonna show you this because this does matter. I did not get it lined up exactly, so I've got a wrong line. So I'm gonna hand this to Megan to go over and press that out. Try not to press out my purple there. Because of the fact that when you start from the center, and you're measuring out, if you don't have two good points on it to, to follow, you're gonna be off just a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more. And so that's why we wanna make sure, in this case, I wanna line it up with that over there so that I've got that lined up and through my center. 
because otherwise as this flares out, it just gets more and more out of line. So that's my line there. I'm gonna put an X here. Whoops, I got two more to draw. And I'm lining it up with the center. You could have put your thumbtack in there if you wanted to have that to line up off of, but I'm just using a straight edge and this was the one I had in my hand. So all of those green lines have an X on them. Now, I'm gonna show you what I did on this because we're using the same center over and over and over. I didn't even count how many times. So when I put my thumbtack in, I wanna make sure it stays in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it where it's supposed to be. And you can see I've got it dead center there. But I'm gonna use a little bit of this RNK tape that I use for my templates. And most of you have seen this before, but because that center is open, I don't have to worry about my spacing on it. I can just have, there's my scissors. I can just have a little square. I've got about a one inch by five eighths inch piece here. And I'm just going to flip that over and put that right on there because I don't want that coming out. And so let's see my original, Megan, the one that's finished so I can show them why that's not going to matter. So you can see in the middle here, I've got a good size space, so it's not going to really matter. So I have set that up seven inches in, drew all eight lines and extended them. And then I went back and drew the lines in between. So I now have 16 lines. We have any questions on that before I go any further? I don't think we have any questions yet about the lines. When they come in, I'll let you know. All right, so here's what we're gonna be using. I need my little black paper over there. I need one of those things like gadget hands where I can just grip and pull and... Well, then you wouldn't need me. Well. You wouldn't have to be running all the time either. The other day we were doing a class and my husband was mowing and all of a sudden we couldn't hear anything. So today we told him he had to get the mowing done before we started. So these are the templates that come together called the Spin and Echo. This is a set. This is the Spin and Echo set. And we have number... I thought I put them in order, but I didn't, so we'll do that. Well, I got them totally. It's like volleyball. They all got to change positions here. So I have up here number one. Number one's the one we're going to be using. Spin and echo number one. If you get the set of these, you're going to get one, six, 14, and 16. And some of you were on my little impromptu about three weeks ago when um, someone, and I don't remember who it was, you can raise your hand and tell us if you want, if it was you, ask about how to do use this template. Because in this template, if you buy this one individually by itself, the handout that they show you, you're not gonna be able to do the design it shows because it just doesn't work. So we learned a little bit about that. You can go back and see it because it should be on there because we just did an impromptu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these aside and I'm going to talk a little bit about this template. So you can see we've got a center line and we've got four, five, six, whatever. That's the distance that it's going to be when you're using it and making something with it. Now these are kind of like measurements that they make sense, but they don't, so we're not gonna pay attention to whether that's an inch or how, how it's working. But we are gonna do all of those positions. We're gonna go from four out to, I think, 11. We're not gonna do 12. 12 caused me some issues, so we're not gonna do number 12. So the way we're gonna be doing this, and I'm gonna use purple thread, is I'm gonna set this on number four. The straight line, is the one that is going to go on the one that we have marked with an X. So on this first one, all we're gonna be stitching from is this point to that point. We are gonna to stitch to the darker lines, from darker line past the one that has the X on it to the next line. So when we start out, 
We're just gonna come in here and I'm gonna place this line that's going right down the middle that has the holes in it. That's on the uh, line that has the X. I'm gonna hold that in place and put my foot down and come in. Now this sounds kind of crazy, but this is the way I do it in class. I say it's like a train. You're coming down that track until you hit the template and that's when you're gonna put your needle down. Now it doesn't matter what happens here, I've gotta get my thread up, so I'm going to pull my needle up, pull my foot up, and floss underneath there to get a hold of my thread. Now remember, I told you, I'm just gonna be pulling that up at the beginning, and then I'm gonna go ahead and back tack when I get to the back and I like the way it worked out so I'll show you how that works when we get back to where we started. So needle back down in the very same hole lined up and all I'm stitching is from that position over to here. That is not even probably an inch. That's how short that is. So I'm coming over here to that purple line and I'm stopping with my needle down. Now you can just rotate this template, but you've got to get this lined up back on that line with the X. So you're going to then see that, oh, well, that's just a little space off there. It's really not when you get your template in place and you push it up against there. I'm going to the next solid line and stop. Rotate. Make sure this is lined up. That's why I have the X on this line out here. And... To the next solid line and you hardly get started now I've already got a little boo-boo in there I'll take it off so you can see it I'm not gonna worry about it because my spider has what Megan six legs eight does my, does my spider have eight legs yeah it does or it's not a spider oh yeah it does it has eight legs <laughs> so guess what one of his legs will go there don't worry about it eight legs on that spider and so what I'm gonna do here is, because I've got that little bit of a distance, I'm just gonna push my template, and I'm only gonna stitch to the green line, and then I'm simply gonna rotate just a little bit to get back off onto that purple line, to that purple line. Because for some reason, this inside one, you might even start with the five instead of that one. But the reason I did it and left it this way was because of the fact that I knew my spider had enough legs to cover it up. So it's not like this is just happening to me both times. It happened to me the very first time also. Why, I'm not sure, because I've drawn all my lines, but it's just making a little bit of a havoc there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is get my spacing gauge because I'm back to where I started. And you can see that's way more than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move that. I'm going to come to that point, and this is where I'm going to stitch over. I'm going to be using my template, and I'm just going to stitch over like two or three stitches, and I'm going to cut my threads. Now, I am not real happy with the way that looks. I'm not submitting that to any contest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to make sure that I've got my thumbtack dead center. And it appears that that's the reason we've got an issue. I didn't get right on top of it and look at it. And so we've got a little problem there. But look, you guys, can you still see all my issues? I don't think so. So we've got our spider big enough to cover that up. And for those of you that are wondering what in the world you're gonna put that spider on with, hot glue. This is a wall hanging for a holiday and we don't need to worry whether we're gonna launder it or not. When I'm laughing at Linda, she says it is a spider web, so we don't know how precise they actually are. Well, unfortunately, they are pretty precise, believe it or not. So that first one, mm. That frustrated me a little bit. So let's get our tape again. For all of you that love to see it so it's like the real McCoy thing. Oh, Sherry asked a great question. 
what does it matter which line the X starts on? Did you mention that, why that matters? Oh, no I didn't, but I will tell you the reason I did it this way, if I turn this so they can see it like it's gonna be as a square, I wanted my points to be up. So the dip down was gonna be like this. So then rather than having a dip this way, my dip's going like that. So all my points are gonna be up when it's hanging. So we're gonna show you right here what I'm talking about. So when this is hanging on the wall, those dips are up rather than being down like this. So, so again, it's personal preference. Right. And if, you, if this is driving you nuts, don't worry. When I'm finished, if we need to take it out, we'll take it out. But now I've got it right there where it's supposed to be. And we are going to start right back here. Remember how I said I've got my line on my template lined up with the X. I'm bringing this in, needle down, needle up, foot up, pull up that thread. I don't know, I hope you can see that I have stable tape that's holding everything in place. And so now I'm stitching to the next line, stop. You hardly get going, these are so small before they stop. And don't get too antsy before you rotate because you gotta wait until it stops there. For those of you just joining us, we don't have a handout handout, but we will have information right after the class with a link to where you can get the templates. And we are gonna be using the outer rim tool today. So for those of you that already have it, we've got another use for that. Now, I'm gonna show you something that we didn't do on the first one that I think is gonna work just great. I'm back, this is not it, but I'm back to where I was, so I'm just gonna go back and forth just a little bit and then pull this out of the way because I wanna go ahead and just cut this. And you can see that I backtracked there a little bit. We're moving it now to number six. I'm picking another location, but I'm picking a purple line in my case here. And I'm going to be coming in right to that line. I know it's not in the right place with my template. Pull up my thread. I did do that incorrectly. What a web we weave here. Let's go to this one now and get this correct. So the question has come, um, could they use the arc in the sampler yes, set to make this? you can do that. You're going to find, when you, when you see how I do this, you're going to find why this is better. But yes, you can improvise and you could do that. So you can see how big this is here. We're going to be able to work all the way out to that. You're going to run out of arc space, but you can do it. So I'm coming over to here. And you can see that it gets a lot easier, so to speak, when it gets bigger. Because I've got a little bit more space to work with before I have to change directions. Now I could go ahead and I can do this like this. That's not a problem. But I will tell you, if I start doing that too much, I end up wandering away from my template. So for me, it's better to just kind of keep rotating this because I end up more precise. So what I'm gonna do here is before I even come to this stitch, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those threads out and get them out of there. And I'm going to use my spacing gauge 
to match this up. Now, for those of you that have not used the spacing gauge that much, I'm measuring so that the flat part touches the flat part of the template. So that's the way I measure to get this exact. And Nancy asked, are there lines on your template that they are following? And I zoomed in really far, so can you show them what you are measuring with? Right here is a line, dead center. Is that what you're referencing? Okay. And that's the only line they're lining that's up with? That's the only line that I have that I'm lining up with. Now what I've done here is, I've come back to where I started, but I'm, I was like this, but I rotate it, line it up again, so that I can sew like three or four stitches and then simply cut it and I was right back on top of where I was. So I don't have to worry about pulling my threads up. Again, you can do that, but I don't know, we're making 20 some rings and I would just rather have it so it's like this because it is a spider web. It's not something that, you know, is, I don't know, like our other things that we do. Now I'm on six, I'm moving to seven. I went to a different spot to start because I kind of I don't want all of those starts to be all in one line going out. So I'm at this point right here, needle down, needle up, foot up, pull up that bobbin thread, set my foot down, needle back in, and I'm sewing past my line with the X on it over to the next purple line. So I skip a line. And like I said, as it starts to get bigger, it starts to get easier. Now, one of the things you might have picked up as I'm doing this, when I've got this centered like it's supposed to be, the spacing there will be even. Now, I'm sure that when I do this here sooner or later, it's not going to be, and I'll show you what you can do to make that. So, as I'm doing this, if I came here and this wasn't, let's say it's like that, and even if you line it up, it's not touching there, then what you would do would be to sew to the center and then correct, and no one would ever know it. I'm sure it's gonna happen, but now you know what to do if it happens to you. So Jean Ann asked, could you spiral this like a web? Does this ruler allow for that? I wish I understood the question. Because you keep going, to, you have a start and a stop point each layer. She wants to know, can you spiral it and just keep going and going and not have any stops and starts? I don't know how you would do that, but there may be a way you could. So this template just doesn't allow for that. Well, I don't know that because I've not, I've not tried that. That, that uh, hasn't jumped into my mind to give a try to. So I suppose if you wanted to, you could stop right here and move to a new one and, you know, draw. I don't know. Um, because like I said, I've not tried that. Now I'm back to where I was and I may have misunderstood that question and if I did, I apologize. Stop this one. Go out to number eight. Now you could skip and go to nine. You don't have to do every single one. It's totally up to you. Needle down, needle up. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line up. That looks like it's about the same angle there, so I can just move on over. And you can see I'm starting to use more of my arc there and I have found a way thanks to my good friend Charmin from Muncie Indiana that you can do this backing and still have a way that you could put like a dowel rod in to hang it remember last week we were talking about that and Charmin gave me a good hint. I didn't do it exactly the way she did, but I have done it very similar, and we're gonna share that with you here at the end. Now, some of you may be wondering why I stopped there and come forward. I forgot, but better do that. 
rather than just going backward. And the reason is because I don't have multiple stitching on this side. I just pulled my thread up and began. So I've got to stitch over this in order for that to be secure. So you can see our spider web developing here. The outer ones look a whole lot better than that middle one. And if I didn't have a good sized spider, I probably would take it out and do it again. But mm, I got a good sized spider, so I'm not going to worry about that. Any questions while we're moving along here? Um, we just had, I think somebody responded to someone else that as they get farther out, if you use something other than this ruler, it would probably be difficult to make the curve. So that's probably pretty true. Yep, and that's why I said, yeah, you could do that, but, you know, it's just like anything else. If I were to send, spend all the time figuring out what your, um, you know, you could manipulate and do, I wouldn't be able to teach you very much because I'd be teaching you how to use something else that, you know, wasn't necessarily intended for that. So, And Patsy also says, could you stitch out on the axis lines rather than tie off at the end of each row? You can, but I found, and that's what I want to do because Megan and I got that idea from our little picture we put up, and I just didn't have time to do it. I think it's going to look a little bit better to do that afterwards. So what she's saying is, could I, when I get to the end, could I stitch out? And I think it's going to look better to do that all afterwards. But you, you could do it twice, that's for sure. So um, you could do it as you're doing it and then do it again, and then you wouldn't have to cut off. Kind of like what you do when you're finishing up a feather, right? Is that what Correct. you're talking about? Correct, exactly. That's a great idea, and that's what I was thinking about a while ago when I said I think I'll do it and then I said no nah, I don't think so because I think it's gonna if I'd have started it that way then it would all been the same heaviness now I forgot to measure this this has happened to me before but don't panic just stop where you're at and measure it and move your template no one is going to know okay I've got this lined up and I can stitch back on that so what she is saying would be like right here, I would stitch out on this axis to my next point and then continue on. So if I were to do that, I would need to, and I'll show you how this is done. So, you know, it'll be in one place so you can see what we're talking about. I would get a straight edge and I would get my quarter inch measuring and I would move out and I would stop right there because I got to figure out how far out I needed to move. And so in this case, I think it's on the 10 that I've got to do this. So I've got to go just a little bit farther. So you're going to have a couple of templates in here because you're going to have to get it so it's exact. There we go. And so this is the way we would do it. So yes, that would be a good way. Maybe I should just do that from here on out. We've got one more to do before I show you a little trick. Now here's one that it's happening. Sorry, I think I just moved you guys. But what I'm gonna do here, because this is not exactly the same angle, I'm gonna sew to the center. And I'm going to then turn that just a little bit to get to this next line. It happens every now and then. And it's not like it's a problem or anything. You're just adjusting as you go. And it may take a couple of times and then you're back on so it's, it's not an issue. So you mean the quilting police isn't gonna catch them? Well, if they are, if they got more time than I do. That's for sure. So if you haven't followed for what I was saying there, this goes from a number four out to a number 12, but we're gonna stop at 11, and I'm gonna show you a little trick that I have used on several templates. 
that kind of extends the use. Now, since this is the way, is this still in the screen view, Megan, what yes. I've got here? So I'm going to cut this one off. It's that other one. There it is. What we've got there is stitched. I'm intending to come back and stitch the whole long line out. But we want to start, stitch to our middle here, and then I'm going to measure this and come right to that point. Now I am stopping with this, so I need to backtrack on my design just a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Now, I can't really go any farther. I tried the 12, and we ended up with do you see the difference here? All of a sudden, instead of it being even away, it's, it's kind of wonky. Now, you know, we could go ahead and do that. What do you think, Megan? Should I do that or should I just leave it? I just remember it, it looked wonky, so. Okay, so let's just go ahead. Just trust us, ladies and gentlemen, okay. it was wonky. It, it kind of looked wonky, so we're gonna do something different. Now, this template, I'm looking at this five line right here. And what I did, for those of you that have been with me before, this is an outer rim tool. And on my outer rim tool, I have used two colors. And if you were following with what I was doing, I put my blue um, marker down to this end so that when I reference it in class, I know which way I'm going and I put my green at the flat end. So my green one means I'm using the numbers on this side, even though they're going in reverse, and the blue one means I'm using the numbers on that side. We're not really using the numbers today, we're just gonna use the holes. So I have two of these. So what I did was I took and I put on to, I'm gonna be using the opposite side. So this is on the wrong side. I put a straight piece of tape with an extra inch up here and this is going towards the rounded edge. And then I put two little pieces on each side. These are about two inches long. And what we're gonna be doing is, we are going to lay the number five, I'm gonna show you like this. We're gonna lay the number five right on that line. It's kind of hard to hold it up where you can see it and get it straight. So I'm going to have to take it over here where I can see it. Let's do it this way. Can they see what I'm doing, Megan? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to line that up with the number five. That's much easier that way. And then press that in place. So what I'm doing is, I'm making my tool longer so that I've got more holes that I can work with. So since we made that longer, this is when we are going to add lines up to 32. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting this back on in place. I've already extended all the lines I currently have. So I am now going to rotate to put the lines in between. So I'm lining up my etch lines here. And I really don't care what color I put in here at this point. But all I need are these out here. I don't need to draw them clear inside here. And this is where once you learn how to manipulate your uh, templates, you can get so much more out of them. So I'm coming over here and I have actually left in my thumbtack to kind of have it as a rotation point but because that hole's a little bit bigger than my thumbtack, you gotta make sure you got everything lined up. And we're just getting these so that we can then work off of them to make them longer with our ruler. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my green ruler here and notice how I'm holding it against my thumbtack and I'm actually putting my finger there so that when I line that up out there, I then know that I've got it straight. I'm gonna put my thumbtack against my finger there and I'm gonna make that line. So we are going to have 32 lines. Now this one's off in there, but it's pretty light, so I'm making it again. And it's pretty important for you to hold your thumb or your finger right there by your thumb tack so that you get this good and straight. I found out the hard way when I was designing. I wasn't going to tell him, but... Well, I'll tell him myself. Okay. Designing was really hard because I didn't didn't keep Mom's that exactly directions. straight and it'll wonder and when it's off just a little at the beginning it'll be off a lot at the end of the line okay just a few more here oh I'm not getting it in the camera you've moved I'm sorry that's okay Hopefully they can see now. So I was curious while you're still drawing, how many of you on here are new? If you could give us some hearts because you are new, we'd love to see you. And if you've been around with us, you can give us some likes. So what we're gonna do now, I'm trying to think. I know I've got 32 lines and I still want my points to be here so I can bring my spider web out. So it's the other ones that are gonna be my dips, right? It's not these. Correct. So, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna do this so it's every other one, so the ones we have, but it will mean something different this time. And you'll see as we go, All right, so I've got 16 X's. The X lines this time are the high spots, okay? The heck X lines are the high spots. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to put this, and it won't matter that you got this like this. This is gonna be fine here, and it's gonna be fine out here. So we are gonna start with the number 10. The way I lined that up with the five, uh-oh, I lined it up with the four. Somebody probably caught that, and I didn't see it. I'm glad I said it before I messed you all up. Lining it up with the five. There's nothing magic about it. It's just that when I reference my numbers, they would be different. We have lots of new people on here. Awesome, That's you guys that are new, I encourage you to go to the so well you're on the so study Facebook page but go back to March 17th that's where we had our let's get started and talking about the templates and markers and stable tape and all that fun stuff all right this makes a little bit more sense we're starting on 10 right Megan because then we're gonna come back and fill in right, right. actually I think I'm gonna go to eight yep I'm gonna start on the one that's got the number eight so I'm, I need to move my arrow but that's where we're gonna start here so what I'm gonna do is this line here X now is the high side so our center line is on the one without the X so I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna put my needle down into my fabric on an X line I'm lining up, can they see this right here? Yes. I'm lining up, I'm starting on the number eight that's on my outer rim tool because basically I am using it as an extender so that I can still get what I want to get done because as we found out, that template runs out of space. So here we go. This is actually a whole lot easier because it's bigger. 
So we stop on an X line, we rotate, we're lined up, we stop on an X line, rotate. So we did have a question from Carol when you were making this extension, and she said, won't your ruler foot be under this? And it's not, right? Mm -mm. Because of the fact that this is coming down flat here. My thickness is out here, but that's not hurting a thing. So you're not going to have any problem with that. It's going to be flat where you need it to be flat. Is the outer rim tool one that comes by itself or does it come in a set? It's an outer rim tool that is by itself. Normally, it's only used for drawing purposes or measuring purposes. Like if you've taken my um, class where we did stars, we made stars with that. So we used it to indicate points and it's just a whole lot faster if you have to draw a point three inches out from the center on let's say 16 lines you don't have to measure you just put it on there and keep rotating it and it makes it so much easier the outer rim tool is one that's pretty much misunderstood because people don't know how to there's two numbering systems and all of that and you can use it as a compass because the rounded end you can put a pencil or a pen or something in there and you're using it as a compass. I got started and didn't get held in place. There we go. So I use it all the time for marking. I'm trying to show you more ways to use it and I've been doing this on several of the templates to expand them, to get them longer. So here is where I am going to backtrack. And this is where I'm on the eight. So I'm gonna take this off, and this is what we were saying a while ago. We could do this to get to the next part. So I'm gonna go up the line. I don't know how much I need to go. Probably went a little bit too much there. So, oh, actually it's not enough. We want to keep that all good and straight because I've got to get there to that line. So now, remember, we're stitching from X line to X line and lining up down here. Wow, that's almost right in the middle of the X. That certainly wasn't intended. Centered and centered. I'm going clear down here and clear up here to check that before I start stitching. Now, as you can see, this one is going to finish out here. Actually, it finishes right there, but the next one is going to be out there. So that's why I said, don't worry, it's in your margin. We'll be cutting that off or actually stitching over it. But the next time we come around, we won't even have enough room to sew, so we're going to go straight down that edge right there. My foot pedal walked away from me. For the, those of you that are just starting to do any kind of template quilting, one of my biggest tips that helps me is that I turn my foot control around to the back so that the high side is closest to me. And then I turn my speed down to half and then I just floor it each time because I don't wanna have to be thinking about my foot control when I've got all of this to be concerned with. Now, here's where I'm going to just sew in the outside edge, move this over because it's out in that extra till I get this right where it needs to be. So as you can see, this spider web has a little gap in the middle there, but we have figured out how to take care of that too. So when we get to that point, after we've finished up here what we're doing, we will do that. 
So I, right here, you can see there's my C for my center line and I'm clear off over here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna sew to the center and then I'm going to rotate it just that least little bit that I need to, to get back on so that it's in the right place. Somebody's evidently asked a question because Megan's over in the prize closet. I don't know if that's what we want to call it, but. Design closet. The design closet, okay. They're asking when you did your Bethlehem Star project, so I was just looking if I could find a date real quick. I don't know for sure when I did it, but I know that it is right there, Megan. Believe it or not, that's it right there. Coming back here, I'm going to measure so that I get right back to that spot. And because I was connected there, I don't need to do any backtracking. I am telling myself I'm on the number 10. So I'm going to take that out of play right there. And I'm going to come up this line. And for those of you that have never seen this kind of thing before, I'm actually going to be stitching all of that again later. So now I was on number... You just said 10, 10. right? No, I wasn't. Oh, yeah, I was. I was on number 10. So now I'm going to what would be 11. Let's see. I'm going to come out here to... Oh, you were talking about doing stars or something earlier. That's what she's asking about. So I'm at 12 right now, and I lucked out, you guys. I got right to that point. And so when I come out in here, I'm not going to finish any of that. I'm just going to move my, I'm calling it my paddle. I'm just gonna move it so that I can stitch down in that margin. Doesn't matter where I'm stitching. I can take it off. I'm on 12, Megan, if I forget where I'm at, okay? Because I need to get clear down to here to get going again. So I'm putting this in, putting it on 12, and I've gotta go a little farther to get this centered up. And so now I'll come back in Move that. And again, I'm going to travel. Now it's just easier to take this off and travel out here in this margin. And some of you are saying, well, what would I do if this was a quilt block? Well, this isn't. And so that's what I'm doing this. If you were in some, you know, something else, you would have to figure out your plan because you could either do this as a quilt as you go because this is kind of the same concept and then you wouldn't have that problem but I'm traveling out here because I can so now I'm in this is lined up I'm gonna go back to that in the margin and we're gonna work out just like we did and for those that have joined us some are asking why aren't you tying off your threads so tell them again why you're... Because this is a wall hanging and I am continuous right now. I was going back and I was actually back stitching. Right there's one where I backtrack because it is a spider web. And I am just putting this together as, you know, I want it to look just as good. Don't get me wrong. It's just a matter of the fact that I can do this a lot faster if I use some of these other ways. Because in this case, with it being a wall hanging, if I have some extra thick threads on the back, really who cares on that? I'm giving you permission to do this in an easy way, is basically what I'm doing. Now I've got this lined up. I want you to see I've got to allow my quarter of an inch, and I've got that, and I'm right back to where I started, okay? I did my stitching up that line. So I've already secured the start of that. I don't need to do any backtracking. 
I'm going to come up this line because again, I'm going to stitch over that here in just a few minutes. I was on 12, so I'm going to 13, and I need to come in. Nope, that's not where I need to be. We're going to 13 and a half, and I'm coming right back down that line. And the reason I'm kind of doing random is because I want this to not be so routine like this. I can have these farther apart, closer together. We are coming back and putting one in that space for those of you that are still struggling with what in the world she's gonna do with that. I'll show you how that's gonna work. We're out here. I'm on 13 and a half, and I've got all of this distance to travel. Okay, I'm going to have a very small piece right in here. So I'm going to put this on at my 13 and a half and see where that's going to be. Because it's going to be on this right there. There's only a little tiny piece that's right down in this corner. But it would have looked odd not to have that. Taking this off out in that margin and traveling. And I'm gonna put it back on at my 13 and a half. This one right here needs to be on that line to start. We're coming to this solid line, not the one that our center goes on, or excuse me, our yeah, center. And because of the way we're going to finish this up, I think this will be our last one around. Now this one could be really frustrating. You guys see the difference there? I could let that bug me to no end trying to figure out what did I do wrong or I can do what I told you and that's just sew to the center line and then rotate this so that it comes back to where it's supposed to and move on. You see, it works its way out. And sometimes those things just happen. It's always interesting to me how we take something that was always done by hand back in the day, we just quilted by hand, and now we try to make it so, 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 so perfect. And there's nothing wrong with perfection, don't get me wrong there. I, I can remember when I used to be a total perfectionist. Life's too short, you guys. Life's too short. Now, that's all of the spider web there that I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do now is where I'm at, and can they see that or do they need to come so that they're more straight on? I'm gonna move them, just give me a second. Okay. While I'm moving, can you tell, we had a question come in, what's another, uh, some other tool, excuse me, some other uses for the outer rim tool? Some of our newbies who've never seen it. Do you want me to show that first or later? Sure. So this is my Bethlehem star that we did in the star class. And all of these points had to be drawn so that we could connect them. Because this was done with nothing but a straight edge ruler. And so all of these points were drawn. And the way we did that is we took, for that example right there, we would put that on to the whole, the, the uh, position that it needed to be. So like I told him, this one needs to be eight. And then all we had to do was, with that on a pen, was rotate this around to make those lines. So it just makes it easier when that pen's in there to rotate to get your distance. So it's more of a drawing tool it and marking it. It is a drawing it. tool. It's not something you're gonna stitch with normally, that's for sure. 
Yeah, it's a drawing tool. And did you want me to put them straight above you? Is that what you want? I want them to be able to see how I'm doing this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do my straight lines. Now, I can do them with this particular template, but I prefer to have a long enough template that's gonna get clear into the center. So if I can find my ruler that has stable tape on it, your green ruler? My green has... ruler that has stable tape on it. Or I'll just use one and put stable tape. So that's fine too. Then you can show them your little trick with stable tape for those of our newbies that are on there. So this is the ruler that I've designed. This is available on my website, which is sobizmarion.com or your local quilt dealer if they carry these quilt store. But I'm putting stable tape on this ruler because it's the same thickness as our templates. And I not only use this in a lot of the measuring part, I'm also gonna use it for the stitching because I don't want to have to stop and reposition. It can be done, it's not a problem. But if I can do this in all one you know, fell swoop, so to speak, that's what I wanna do. So I'm going to go out past my margin, and I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to stitch all the way here to the center. And I'm just making sure, and it's lined up right, I'm coming all the way down, and because I want that heavy, I'm going back over it again. Clear out to the outer margin. Now these stitches right here, I'll probably, if I don't put a spider there, I'll probably come back in and take them out because I've secured everything here. Now I can move over to my next line. I don't want one there because I don't have these joins. So I'm gonna come down to the farther line and I'm gonna set this in place. And do you want that even though you've got joins up there but not the bottom? You still want that, I'm just right? coming into here. I'm just coming into this one right here. On this particular one. Ooh, I like this a whole lot better. Ooh, stay out in the margin. We're coming down here. This one will go all the way. So I'm gonna stitch. Since I stopped there, I'm gonna measure. Gonna have to make this one a little heavier, I guess. You may end up making them all heavier like that. They look better. So I'm gonna stop at that because you don't need to know how to make all these straight lines because I wanna show you how to fill this in here. And so I'm going to come over to just one of those spaces and I am going to plant my needle dead center. Actually, I've got an easier way to do that. Which way did I do that? Did I do them this way? I think I did. You, yeah, you followed, you followed the inner one. Okay. So I'm going to set this dead center here, foot down, needle down, needle up, foot up, pull out my thread. So what I'm going to be doing is, I am not measuring this, you guys. You could if you wanted to. I'm going to be putting just a line so that I can use my 
spacing gauge to get to that point each time. So I'm going to put my template up against here, which is kind of backwards. I need to allow a quarter of an inch and I'm going to space or stitch to that next spot. So right here's my spot I'm stitching to, my quarter of an inch. Some of them are starting to get creative and send in suggestions on what else you could add to this. What are they adding to it? Well, we could do it with, let's see here. Pam says it would be really cool with some gold thread in the web. Yeah. And Jennifer said with furry yarn uh, couched here and there. That's a great suggestion too. And if you're not aware of it, So Steady has... A couching foot so it's the same foot here except there is an opening in it that allows yarn to be held in place so you can couch with a narrow zigzag while you're doing template quilting so let me get that foot that's a perfect use for it Cat. wish I'd have thought of that Kathy said you could use gold or silver thread Oh, send in your ideas, guys, because we love them. How about metallic thread? That's whatever color. It could be black. It could be any color. So here's the foot, you guys. Need my black paper there. This is what it looks like. It has a little hole in the center. Can you see that plastic piece there? Hold on. I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Got it. So that's your couching foot, and it holds your decorative thread right in the center so it's going to be coming down through here and then you can use a narrow zigzag while you're doing the same thing we're doing right now so that is a great idea and that's a good way to use that couching foot is the couching foot liz is asking the same thing as the decorative foot i'm not sure whether it's called it we only have two feet the regular foot and I'm going to call, maybe it's called the decorative stitch foot. I can't remember, but I use it to couch thread. So if that's what it's called, that is the same foot. Okay. Now, I've still got some things to do to this one. But I can tell you, I'm going to hand it to Megan, don't, don't get rid of my outer lines. Okay. Get rid of the, my inner lines so that they can see what this ends up looking like. Okay. Because it looks a whole lot better once you've gotten rid of all of those extra lines there. Oh, give me a second. My iron Oh, her off. iron's off. So let me tell you how we're going to finish this. So that's all of the ruler work that I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead while she's got that. I need to change to my regular foot anyway. And those of you that are just joining us for the first time today, this glider is what allows me to glide smoothly with my templates. But you'll notice that it is cut out so that I have the ability to leave it on and sew with my regular foot. So I'm going to do just that. I'm not even going to change the thread on what I'm doing right now so that you can see it as I stitch it. So this is just my regular multi-purpose foot is what I would call it. And so what I did, well let's show it here. So you can see I've got some things I've got to take out. I've got to take that out right there. There's a little spot right there. And when we're all finished with this, we will actually square this up. 
So I would go ahead and finish my spider lines. I like that a whole lot better. So let me have that one over there. And for those of you that don't want to do it the straight stitch way, let's show you what we can do. Since I've already changed my foot, I'm kind of winging it, you guys. You're okay with that, I'm sure. Is this my right side? I can't even tell. Well, that's a square. So, so I'm gonna draw my lines that I'm gonna stitch. Boy, if I had my couching thread that I could use it, I could just do that right now. So I do have a question from Carol about the couching foot. Will it work with a straight stitch only machine? Yes, it will work. But in order to couch the thread down, you usually have to have a, a little bit of a width to it to catch it and to couch it. So I don't know if it would catch your threads. If you had a fairly wide thread, I suppose it might. I'm losing everything off the back here. Could you go in different directions with the couching foot? No, you're not gonna go back on, your, on itself, that's for sure. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set this for a narrow zigzag real narrow you can hear it moving in to be real narrow and I'm going to go over it a couple of times like I said I'm winging it you guys so we'll see what this looks like because I didn't think that that was really, maybe just one time is gonna work. I didn't think that was very, oh yeah, I like this a lot. Oh, let me move this. I didn't, I see now what we're doing. So what I'm doing is I'm coming clear to the center with a narrow zigzag. I like that look better because it really needed a little bit more oomph to it than what that. Now remember, this is not the same piece, you guys. This is the one that I had that I did earlier. It's already squared up and everything, so I can show you how to do what I, we want to finish for the back. The reason the project wasn't finished is because Donnell put all of that stuff on that needed to be on the front. She put it on the back. So here's my little trick. When I have all of these threads, if you want to take and hand me the, that's called a lint roller. I couldn't think of the okay. word. All I have to do is roll this with the lint roller. I guess that was a long thread. And that'll get my short little threads off of there so I don't have to, you know, pull each and individual one of them off. Most of them, I think, are like in this little zigzag. I think this is looking more like a spider web would look. So for this one, do you have your feed dogs up? Oh yeah, I'm sewing a regular straight stitch. So now this is in the outside border. And I'm just going to, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay. Ooh, I like Joyce's glow in the dark thread. Oh yeah. That if would I could have found my glow in the dark thread, I would mix it with this. Now you notice I've turned my speed up. so I can get this done a whole lot faster. But I like the look of going to the center and then turning it around and coming back out. It just gives it a little bit more oomph. So this is kind of fun, you guys, just playing along with your suggestions. And the glow-in-the-dark thread is a great one. And if you're not familiar, 
with that. You could even put that with this thread so that you had the look of the purple and the effect of the glow in the dark. But my whole idea was, first of all, obviously we were at the dollar store and found the spider. But second of all, I wanted you to see how we use those spin and echo templates and how we can use the outer rim tool to get out farther away. And you could use that outer rim tool on a lot of other templates too. I mean, just, you know, it doesn't even have to be where you've got, you know, holes in it for um, lining up. It could be just moving that template farther away from a central point that you're, you know, using. Oops, almost started in the middle. So now the reason I'm going ahead, I've got half of them done. Well, maybe, not quite. Is because I really can't finish this until I do these lines because they go out into the border. But I've just got a very narrow zigzag and I'm only going through the lines that go all the way to the center. Now, for those of you that are, this is you're wanting to know how we're gonna finish this up so that the back, I'm doing what I call the framing method so that you're not gonna have anything, no extra binding on the outside. So what I want you to do, oh, did I break my thread? Nope. So what I want you to know is that you're gonna to need to have four three inch wide strips you are going to press those strips in half right sides out. So Megan's going to show you that while I'm repositioning here and stitching. Trying to be Vanna. So you've got four three inch strips that you pressed with the right sides out so they're now an inch and a half. Now there's nothing magic about the three. You could actually do four inch if you wanted but three is adequate. And then you are going to have, I use three inch squares. You could use four inch squares, even with your three inch wide. But I have two three inch squares that I pressed in half to make a triangle. Triangle? Yep, they're oh. right there. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't press them in half the right way. I'm gonna go press these for your So other you're one. just gonna make a triangle like so. They also wanna know what is your zigzag width and length. Well, they're different on every machine, but on mine I've got a width of 1.6 and a length of 0.85. So anything less than one. I know why Megan's so intense on helping me get this one done. She's got eyes on this for her classroom. I know it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. You're not going to let have them have any spiders in there? Oh, I, I just, the answer is yes, I want it, but. I think I'll put one of those spiders right on a mask. The closer it gets to Halloween, I'll glue one right on the corner of my mask. What do you guys think? I think if we have to wear masks, they might as well be fun. So I think I'll get one mask that I'm going to make, and I'm going to cut out with my AccuQuilt, I'm going to cut out some little pumpkins. So those of you that have a Cricut or a Silhouette or anything like that, cut out some small little pumpkins or maybe the word boo. Put some fusible on the back before you cut it out and then just put that on your mask. And if you're not a mask maker, go buy you a mask and put it on that way. Because <laughs> hey, you don't have to be a mask maker. 
So this one, that one did break. Okay, we are going to re-thread. Gotta laugh because somebody said they wish that the spiders in their neighborhood would use glow in the dark so oh. that when they walk their dogs in the early morning they don't step in the wet. <laughs> oh, I tell you. And yes, Pats, Patsy, instant Halloween costume. You don't have to do a whole lot with the costumes this year. Just yeah. put on a mask and go buy some wings and or tutu. <laughs> Oh, you guys, I'm loving this. I like it so much better than just those straight lines. But yes, you could do the straight lines to get from one place to the other because this is going to get back over it. So that would st that concept would still work. And even if it was a different color, that would be cool too. You can do whatever. So this is my last line. And what I need to do now is determine how I'm going to hang this so that I know where I want to put my Oh, look, Megan, isn't that cool? It is very cool. Okay, I want to hang it this way so that my spider is down in my lower right-hand corner. And my spider's been very patient over here. Okay, so it can, it can be right down here. So that means that this side up here is the one that's going to have my flange on it to hold it back. So the first thing... I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little three inch and like I said they could be four inch but I'm going to take these little three inch pieces and I'm going to put it right here in the corner now just to extend it just a little bit I am going to pull it in just a little ways there so it makes it just a little bit bigger now, for those of you that are, you know, just put it all together and sew it, that's perfectly fine. I like to do a little bit of construction here that makes it easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this one in place. If you've not seen, these are called magic pins. And this up here is not harmed by the heat. So if I left those in and I pressed over them, it won't hurt anything. But I'm just going to stitch this down in this corner. I'm going to rotate... I don't like to sew over pins. And I'm going to stitch to that corner. This is all on the right side. Again, my spider's here. Up here is my top. So I'm coming down to this corner and I'm going to do the same thing. That's a cool idea. They, a lot of them have said use this for uh, either table mats or table toppers. Uh, Darla says she might even put this out for her trick or treaters. The mat. That's sure. A good idea. I'm waiting to see what the restrictions they put on us for trick or treating this year. Could be interesting. Down at the bottom, I've got my two corners up here. At the bottom, we're going to take one long strip. And it's going to go on the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch that. And in this case, the bottom is going to be the finished. So I'm going to go right with the edge of my presser foot. So it's going to get on there so that it's totally finished. Some of you are saying she sews so fast. I quilt slow. 
but I sew fast. And when you've got everything set up and it's easy, take advantage of it. Now, you'll notice that my piece down here is a little bit longer. The closer I get to that, I want to cut that off. And I'm trying to find my, there they are. I absolutely love these scissors, and I, I'm not certain whether they're available from Sew Study. I know they were ones that we sent out when we were doing shows and things, but hand me my black piece of paper there, Megan. These are serrated. So on the, where do you want me to put them? No, just to go up. Go up? Right there, that's perfect. They have serrated blades, and so they grab your fabric. So rather than when I put this on here, it just kind of being there, it's grabbing that fabric. So I'm going to get a good cut right even with that edge because it grabbed on there. If I had just a regular blade on that, it just might move a little bit. And so I'm just telling you, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that you can never have enough scissors. <laughs> well, Megan like that. Okay. Wow. It's the truth. <laughs> You can never have enough scissors, at least of the right ones. Oh, Jennifer's asking, are you doing a fourth of an inch seam allowance or just width of your foot? I'm doing the width of the foot, which in this case is three-eighths. Okay. Okay? So I'm doing three-eighths. But you could do a quarter of an inch. So now what we've got is we kind of have a pocket down here for the, the bottom edge. And we have these two little flanges up here at the top. So now we're going to put in the other three pieces. So this one just goes in, and I don't need to put it clear down there. I'm just going to come up a little way so I don't have all of that in my corner, and I'm matching it up right with the edge. Because once this is turned, this is going to be behind that. So I'm coming back in here. I'm going to, again, use that three-quarters, or excuse me, three-eighths of an inch. Do your serrated scissors have a special name? Um, I'll look to see if there's a name on them. Or I can look but while If they you don't sew. have them on Sew Study, most sewing stores have them. These are Clover. These are made by Clover. So I'll show you right there. Can they see them? They're made by Clover. There you go. And they're not a full 8 inch scissor. They're, they're a smaller scissor, but I absolutely love that serrated edge. Now when I get to the top here, I'm going to go ahead right now, and I know you can't see it, but I'm going to cut that off because I'm off the edge of my table. And I'm going to take the other one Let's move this so they can see down here in this corner. And I'm going to lay it on top. There we go. So I'm going to cut this off so it's a little bit shorter. And I'm going to pull this one in. These edges meet and these edges meet. Okay? So I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to come in, because i got to catch it. I'm going to go ahead and raise my foot with my needle down and push that right underneath there. I may have come too far. We'll see. We're and good. What happens if they do go too far? Then you just back up. Just back your stitch up. No problem. Meta wants to know, is what you're doing right now called a facing? It is. It's more of a facing. That is a great way to say it. And I learned this on a class myself. And I've tweaked it a little bit with my friend Charmin's suggestion for the triangles. And that way... We're going to be able to turn this. Yes, there's hand stitching, and most of you know I'm allergic to hand stitching, but I can do it. 
And um, we've got a sample that's finished. Megan, it's hanging on our rack over there that we can show them. It's the red one with the wreath around it, or the wreath in it. It's right over here on the rack. Now what I'm gonna do here is I need to catch this edge. Actually, no, I don't wanna catch that edge. I'm gonna have to go back and take the other one out. Don't wanna catch the edge. I had it right to begin with. One more stitch. There we go. You see this seam ripper, Megan? I need those stitches out, so just come underneath there. Oh no, I might be allergic to seam ripping. We only got <laughs> seven or eight more to do. Oh, you can't do that because I can't sew straight. <laughs> They are loving your triangle idea. Yeah, because then we can just put a dowel rod in the corners there. This is not very long. If it's longer, I think you can get by with just the dowel rod. But if it's longer, you're going to have to put a couple little things in the middle there, like little loops on the back to hold that in place. But I'll tell you my little secret is, instead of a dowel rod, I like to use a yardstick because it's flatter. So you can get a yardstick and cut it to whatever length you want it, and that will work too. So now what I'm taking out is right over here on the corner, I stitched that part down, and I don't want that stitched in place. So here's what I'm going to do to fix it. I'm taking out just a little bit. I'm cutting a little bit more off of it. And I will come back here. I will clean up all these threads for those of you that are just about to go nuts on that. Don't worry. There we go. I love these machines with the pivot. And I'm just gonna backstitch here. And I'm one of those people that I never trust myself completely. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna fold and make sure I've got everything so that it's gonna fold back. And look there, that side got caught and it shouldn't have. So I can't fold that back like I want to. So I'm making them all mistakes tonight. Well, while you're ripping that out, the question is if you use the yardstick would you need larger triangles? I don't think so. I think this is gonna fit right in there. So we'll see here in just a second. I forgot I had my triangle in here and that's why I can't have this piece caught in. If I did, if I, this would have been a corner that's, uh, as she said, a flange corner would have had that, but I don't want this piece caught in there because of the triangle. I'm looking at your one here. You could probably use um, 3M hooks, too, on, on this one. I like your curtain rod idea, or your dowel rod idea better. Well, now we know we got one corner here done. Let's hope for the best on the others, but probably just like what I did there. Oh, that one's correct. This one's not. We need some music like they have on Jeopardy so that we can have our ripping out music. That's what we'll call it. Megan's probably looking for some music. I am. Just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. 
I always found that once I made the mistake and made it really well, I mean, really, uh, is that, I made it really good, I don't know, I made it, I made it, so if I've got that mistake made, the next time I will know I don't want to screw up again because that took all that extra time. She's got Jeopardy on here for us. So I probably won't make this mistake again. And last but not least. <laughs> Cindy says, rip into the oldies. I like that one there too. There you go. Rip into the oldies. Oldies but goodies. So why did I have to rip out this extra? It's because when I go to turn it, should have tested it like I did that first one. Then I wouldn't have done all of these the wrong way. So when I uh, finally get around to turning this, I may have had a birthday. Not that I have one coming up any kind time soon, but oh boy. So this is the bottom corner and it has to have that like that. So all I gotta do is stitch this and back stitch. Alrighty. Turn and it works. Turn. Turn because this is what we want. We want this extra here because we don't want that hooked in because it's behind my little triangle piece. And the same thing here, this is back this way, so it's behind the triangle. Now, I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna come to this side, I'm gonna cut this off, because I don't want all this extra heavy in that corner. So you can see, I did substantial trimming there, and I wouldn't, would not have wanted to do this until I made sure I had those done the correct way. Would I normally use my purple thread? No, but if I didn't, you couldn't see what I did. And in this case, I'm not planning for this to be judged and it won't show on the outside anyway. You put an awful lot of those in the corners. Is that just so, because it's really thick? It is really thick because there's a lot there. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn it to the back and turn this out with a point turner. And so I'm turning this out so that I've got that point turner. Am I in the screen? Mm -hmm. So that I'm turning that point out and then this is going to get pressed back like this. So I'm going to just put a pin in here Because remember, these pins are the silicone tops, so I'm not going to have any problem if my iron gets close to them. And then this side here is going to come back. So yes, whoever said this is kind of a... Forget what she called it, but whatever facing. it was. Facing, yeah is a good way to describe this. So even down here on the ones that have the triangle, well that's the other one there. You can see I've got tons of thread. This is the triangle. So I'm going to turn this back like this, get that thread out of there. I'm going to put that pin in to hold that in place, and I'm going to turn this one back. And then I'm going to flip this through. And so all of that extra that's in there, if it gets too much in your way, you can always cut some of it out because once we've got this 
through and like so, that's gonna end up all underneath that triangle piece. So manipulating this so that you can see what it's gonna finish like. Some of you were doubting whether it was gonna work because I made so many boo-boos. But you can see now, once we have hand stitched the straight part there, this will be left open and that's where, I don't have a yardstick here, but just pretend this is it. That will just fit right back in there and then it would go across to the other side. So once it's all finished, it's gonna look like this. This is the front. So you've got a nice smooth edge with no binding or anything. And then this is the back. This is what your bottom is gonna look like. So you're gonna be hand stitching this around but don't stitch down your little triangles. So going forward, yes, I would make my triangles bigger. I think I would do at least a four inch triangle. This is gonna work for this size of a wall hanging, but I think maybe a little bit larger triangle would be the best thing to do. So I think you can see what we've ended up here with. It's not all pressed in place. I don't have my spider named, but maybe it's going to be Matilda, and she can sit right in there. And if you want a couple of spiders on your web, you can do that too. Again, you can find all different kinds of things. If you have an embroidery machine, you might want to embroider a spider. So my main purpose today was to teach you how to do that spin and echo and how you could make it so it went out a lot larger. They would like to see the triangle from the front. So where's your edge with one of the triangles so they can see what that looks like? From the front? Yeah. It's right there. That's the triangle on the back. Here's the triangle. On the front, it looks just the same as any of the corners do. Okay, so that triangle is right there in that corner. And you know, once this is all hand stitched, let me see if I can get this pin so it's not sticking through to the top. Once this is all hand stitched, that triangle remains loose. But you gotta put that triangle down first, and then you're just gonna hand stitch underneath there and leaving this loose, then you can put that through there. So you named yours Matilda. A lot of them are either gonna call it Charlotte or some even said they might call it Donnell. Oh no, don't call it Donnell. I don't, I, I, mm, no, that, mm, well, whatever. All right, well, thanks for joining us today for, what do we call it? Caught, Caught in, in a web. web. Caught in a web. And I hope to next week have my project from last week all cut out so I can share it with you. I was ready to do that today and realized I hadn't even finished some of the stitching. So I had to get on my project for today. So hopefully I can show you that next week. I encourage everybody to do something for yourself today. Be kind to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Bye now.